Welcome to the More Than Fitness Podcast. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to mini-sode number 108. Today's topic is going to be one that I get asked about quite frequently. We're talking about meal plans. Specifically, do you need a meal plan for fat loss? I think meal plans are one of those things that people read about in magazines or they hear some celebrity is following it or an athlete's following a meal plan and they just automatically assume that, yes, uh, a meal plan is what I need. And I think it's also very enticing because it's just a uh, blanket, eat this and you'll get the results you want. However, obviously, uh, with the obesity epidemic and things like that, it's clearly not that simple. If meal plans were just as easy as, hey, follow this, you'll lose weight uh, and, and feel feel good and look good forever, then uh, I don't think we'd have such a problem. But what I've found with the clients that I've worked with uh, through the schooling that I went to to become a dietitian uh, and even with my own experience Meal plans just seem to be a band-aid on a broken leg. And if you've listened to this podcast before, you've probably heard me say that for for other things as well. But I think that the analogy uh, works because meal plans are are typically a a short-term solution. And and I think how, uh, well, I guess I can give you an example of how I can use them with, with the clients that I work with. So whenever they would first come to me and maybe they haven't, ever track their calories or their macronutrient intake before. And so to give them a rough estimate of, hey, this is how many calories and and this is your macronutrients to hit for the day. Here's an example meal plan that can show you how to match your food choices to your your calorie and macro targets, right? It can be kind of like training wheels uh, until they can do it on their own. Um, so I, I think that that's one reasonable excuse to use a meal plan. Again, though, I think it's a a short-term solution. I think the main problem people have with meal plans is that they're viewed in a binary fashion. You're either on the meal plan or you're off the meal plan. And an example of this would be, let's say your meal plan calls for a banana at lunch and maybe you don't have a banana and maybe you opt for an apple instead. Uh, An apple would be a very similar macronutrient profile as a banana, but since you want to follow your meal plan exactly, you you had the the apple instead of the banana, well then you've, you've gone off your meal plan. And whenever you've gone off your meal plan, you tend to really go off your meal plan. And so just that one little, oh, I failed. I didn't follow my meal plan to a T, that can lead to the fuck it mentality. And then that one decision of, oh, uh, I I went off my diet, that can lead to, okay, now since I'm off my diet, I'm going to binge eat all this pizza, donuts, et cetera, et cetera. And maybe that could lead on for, for several days, especially if this decision was like Friday at lunch, and then you just decide to take the entire weekend, quote unquote, off your diet. And so that is the main problem that I see with meal plans. And I I think it also doesn't work whenever you need to be flexible, whenever you need to be adaptable. So think about whenever you go on, whenever you go on vacation or whenever you go out to eat or, uh, you know, wedding events or just any random lunch or something with, with coworkers, your boss wants to buy lunch for everybody, but you don't want to do it because you don't want to enjoy it with everyone else because you don't want to go off your meal plan. Uh, And I think that that's obviously as far as sustainable solutions long term, uh, that's, that's, that's not going to, to, to work. Uh, I think that one of the biggest problems um, for people is not necessarily weight loss. It's, it's losing the weight, but then keeping it off. And I think this, the, the keeping it off part is where meal plans really fall short. So I think I think that 
since they don't promote that sustainable solution, since you can't see yourself following that meal plan forever, it's like you're going to come to a point where we're sure you can maybe follow that meal plan for for 30 or 60 days uh, with minimal uh, messing up. But then what do you do after that? Inevitably, you're going to have to figure out how to eat on a regular basis without the meal plan. And so that's why I said it's just a band-aid to a broken leg because it doesn't address the deeper issue of you not understanding uh, basic nutrition, education, uh, knowing how many calories are in certain foods, portion control, how many, uh, how much protein does this food, ha food have, carbohydrates, uh, fats, et cetera, et cetera. You can only get that for the most part by having a period of time where you track your food, track your calories, track your macros. And then if you do that for three, six, nine, 12 months, however long uh, you would like, you get that education and then you don't have to keep tracking forever. People, I think, tend to hate on tracking calories because they think that it's, uh, you know, super tedious and thinks it's it's even disordered eating, which is r ridiculous. I think it can get to that point for some people. Uh, however, uh, I think that so can tracking your finances as well, right? So I don't, I don't think that that's necessarily the culprit, but what it can be good for is uh, track your food for a certain period of time and then use those those habits and skills that you you developed how to eyeball portions how to know how much protein is not in peanut butter right uh, little things like this and then you can kind of guesstimate your way towards losing fat gaining muscle uh, or maintain maintaining the 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 weight loss that you've you've gotten over the past few months so I, I think that that's, that's what meal plans is missing. And, and I think that, no, uh, you definitely don't need a meal plan for fat loss. I think that it can be a good tool, especially in the beginning, to help you kind of figure out how to, to structure meals, how to uh, eat on a regular, consistent uh, meal schedule, basically, uh, how to balance out your meals in terms of uh, having a protein source, having a carb source, having fat source, having a fat source, uh, having some type of fiber, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, et cetera. I think that can, that can be a pro of it, again, but it's not a long-term solution, so use it sparingly. Uh, all right. And I think that's basically all I wanted to cover on this one. Wanted to get straight to the point with this, give you guys a few examples. Uh, if you have any more questions about this, drop a comment below, send me a message on Instagram, send me an email. Would love to hear from you. Uh, all right. And that is it for Minisode 108. Thank you guys as always for listening and for watching. See ya.